All right, you guys asked for it. We did a video recently on this channel where we talked about first round picks and if they were really worth it. And in the comment section of that video, there was a lot of comments saying we need to see the second round. We need to go deeper into these drafts. Let's talk about it a little bit more today. I have some second round pick data for you guys. And so we will be talking about the same classes, the same data parameters. I've done the research for you. I'm going to warn you right now. You might want to get a barf bag. It gets pretty ugly. It gets pretty gross. But you guys know what we got to do. Tuck those shirts in. I'm already pre-tucked, but we about to eat, baby. So let's talk about it. A little bit of a refresher, what this data means, what the video goals are, all of that good stuff. So starting it off with the goals, we are going to be taking a critical look at the three previous classes that we talked about last time. Those classes are going to be 2019, 2020, and 2021. We're going to find out how successful these past classes have been for your fantasy football rosters in terms of fantasy points per game. Who is scoring for your fantasy football teams and how good have they been for your fantasy football teams because of that? We want to see what the ROI is on these picks because obviously these picks are worth a lot in the trade market as you approach the rookie drafts. We're only about nine days away from the rookie draft at this point, at least I think if I'm doing my math correctly. So we want to make sure that they're worth it when we are using those picks. And we also want to use it as a glimpse as to what this 2024 class could be down the road. Keep in mind, this is a class that we are deeming as a strong, deep class. So maybe a little bit better in the second round, but that's to be seen later in this video. Let's talk about the data parameters, how I have pulled the data, what we're going to be looking for, what are some of the rules and requirements for this data. The first one that we're going to be talking about is each of these players had to have played in six games for that year to count. If they did not play in six games, that year doesn't count for them. And for quarterbacks, it means they had to start in six games. This is to eliminate punishing players for injury seasons, for seasons that they didn't start, all of that stuff. It's really just to remove the outliers in this data. So that's why we're going to be going with six games minimum and looking at that fantasy points per game. And with that fantasy points per game data parameter, that is what we are using today. We're going to be using that as the benchmark. We are not going to be using total points because we know if you had one player average 17 points per game, in a 12 game sample size. We had another player average 16 points per game in a 17 game sample size. The player who played more games would have more total points at the end of the year. But really the player who played in less games but averaged more fantasy points per game, he was a bigger difference maker for your fantasy football rosters than the guy who played in more. So that's why we're using the fantasy points per game benchmark. And then last but not least, the player has to have at least three years of a sample size. We're looking at the rookie contract specifically because we're going to be talking about rookies. How good are they for you on their rookie contracts? That's why we're looking at 2019, 2020, and 2021. So that is the quick refresher. If you guys watched the first episode, if you haven't watched the first episode, that's how we conduct that data. So you can go back and look at the first round data after this video ends. Let's talk about what makes a player successful, what makes them a failure. I've done it in two parts here. The first part is for quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers. And we are going to be using the verbiage of firm hits, fair hits, and failed players. So if you want to be a firm hit, aka green, everything went well, you have to have a top 12 finish in fantasy points per game for those quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers. A fair hit or the yellow data is going to be a top 24 finish in fantasy points per game. And then anything outside of the top 24 is going to be a failed season or red data on our charts when we look at them here in a little bit. And for tight ends, it's going to be a little bit different just because it's a little bit harder to be a difference maker at the tight end position. So we are going to skew that data. A top five finish is a firm hit or our green data. Top 12 is going to be a fair hit or our yellow data. And then outside of the top 12 in fantasy points per game will be that red data for you. So a failed season from the tight end position if they are not a top 12 player. So now that you guys have the context, let's hop right into these classes. We're going to be starting off with 2019. So you guys can see the ADP up on the screen right now. We have pulled this from Sleeper API. So we can see the Superflex ADP from that time. This is what the 2019 class looked like in the second round at that time. Hollywood Brown, Noah Fant, Devin Singletary, Andy Isabella, Damian Harris, Justice Hill, Daniel Jones, Irv Smith, Alexander Madison, Drew Locke, Deontay Johnson, and Miles Boykin to round out this 2019 class. Now, as we pull up the heat map, and this is what you guys like seeing the most, let's look at how these guys fared as far as fantasy points per game over their rookie contracts here in 2019. Now, I told you guys you might need a barf bag, and looking at this data, I'll tell you right now too, spoiler alert, it's not the worst class we're gonna be looking at. 2019, there is a lot of red. And when we look at what these guys actually produced, 
you can see right now, zero players, 0% of these guys produced multiple firm hit seasons. So that's top 12 seasons during their rookie contract. We had nobody give us multiple. Now, if you want to look at the players who gave you at least one top 12 finish of their respective positions, we only had two players. So 16% of those second round pits gave you one top 12 finish over those four years. Those players were Daniel Jones and Deontay Johnson. And let's be honest, I don't feel like either of these players are players that we are just salivating over in our Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues right now. So let's take it a step lower. Let's look at that fair hit. How many of these guys produced a top 24 season for us? Well, the data shows us five out of 12 players, so less than 50%. It's actually 41.7% of these players produced a top 24 season during their rookie contract. Those players are going to be Daniel Jones and Deontay Johnson that we talked about, but also include Marquise Hollywood Brown, Noah Fant, and Damian Harris. And then when you look at the other guys, the guys who failed to produce any top 24 numbers over the course of their rookie contract, that is 7 out of 12 players. So 58.3% of players never produced a single hit worthy season in fantasy points per game over their rookie contract. Obviously, all of these failed players are going to be the names of Devin Singletary, Andy Isabella, Justice Hill, Irv Smith, Alexander Madison, Drew Locke, and Miles Boykin. So I think off of first impressions here at this 2019 class, just looking at the 0% of players who produced multiple top 12 hits, that obviously is something that is a lot worse than what we wanted it to be. Obviously, we're not expecting a ton of talent out of these second round picks, but 0% is as worse as it could get for these second round picks. And just that step further, like I said, 16.7% who produced one firm hit. It just shows you how hard it is to hit on a second round type of talent and how hard it is for them to be difference makers for our fantasy football rosters. And I think the scariest thing out of this data right now is that just in this class alone, when you're looking at that missed or that failed hit, over 50% of second round picks never produced anything for your fantasy football rosters. So to put that in comparison, we are viewing these second round picks as high upside assets that we can put on our roster. You could probably send a couple of them for veterans that are scoring top 24 numbers. If you sat and picked one of these players and they never produced a top 24 season, which was about 58% of this class, you basically would have thrown that pick in the trash. You would have lit it on fire. It would have been nothing for your fantasy football rosters. And I think that's kind of scary to think about, but that's just one of these classes. So let's move on to the next class. Let's see how the data fares in the next year. So we'll pull up 2020. You guys see the ADP right here. Coming off the board of the 201, Keyshawn Vaughn, Michael Pittman, T. Higgins, Denzel Mims, Zach Moss, Brandon Ayuk, Antonio Gibson, A.J. Dillon, LaVisca Chenault, Jordan Love, Chase Claypool, and Anthony McFarlane. So we talked about this class in the first round episode being such a strong class when you got into the second round. Obviously, we got names here like Pittman, Higgins, Ayuk, Jordan Love, obviously some big names here. So let's talk about how they produced for fantasy football rosters. So we'll pull up the heat map. You guys see it here from a fantasy points per game standpoint. And even though we have those names, still a lot of red on this heat map. Going back to the data, how many of these players produced multiple firm hits in fantasy points per game? Again, just like 2019, that number is going to be 0%. So 0 out of 12 players giving us multiple top 12 seasons. Now, how many of these players produced one firm hit or one top 12 season? The answer is one player. Just 8% of this class has been able to produce a top 12 season. And that was saved by Jordan Love last year after multiple years on the bench behind Aaron Rodgers. And keep in mind, 2019 was able to give us two of these guys. So even though this was a stronger class, we still got less top 12 finishes out of these players. So let's go back to the fair hits. Five out of 12 players gave you a fair hit or more during their rookie contracts. That is the same number as 2019, 41.7%. Those players are going to be Jordan Love. Michael Pittman, T. Higgins, Brandon Ayuk, and Antonio Gibson. And I think that these fair hits feel a little bit better than the ones that we got in 2019 because you see with Gibson, you see with Ayuk, you see with Higgins and Pittman, really all of these guys, they gave you multiple of these seasons. So that is a little bit better than what we saw in 2019, but still not really getting the difference makers or the players that are going to break into that top 12, which are going to be the guys that help you win Dynasty Fantasy Football Championships. And then looking at the failed draft picks, going back to this as well, just like 2019, seven out of 12 players, 58.3% of the class, 
failed to ever produce a hit worthy season so we've seen it once but now we've seen it twice this is kind of becoming a trend now more than 50 percent of the class not being fantasy football relevant for you at all during the entirety of their rookie contract the players that failed here Keyshawn Vaughn Denzel Mims Zach Moss AJ Dillon LaVisca Chenault Chase Claypool and Anthony McFarland so as I've said this class still strong class still a class that we like because we talked about it in that first round episode but you still see we had zero percent of players produce multiple top 12 seasons we did have the breakout from Jordan Love, so that probably looks like we could have a guy give you multiple top 12 seasons as it goes further on. So yes, we've had some solid Dynasty Fantasy Football assets, but again, that 58.3% of the class giving you nothing at all keep throwing those picks in the trash. They are lighting them on fire. It just continues to emphasize and put it into perspective how much of a gamble it is to use a second round pick and then find a difference maker with that second round pick. So we've looked at two classes so far. Let's look at the last class that we are going to look at today, 2021. The first round data was pretty decent for 2021 when we looked at it. You guys see the ADP for the second round here on the board. Trey Sermon, Rashad Bateman, Michael Carter, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, Amon Ross St. Brown, Kadarius Tony, Pat Frymuth, Kenneth Gainwell, Amari Rogers, and Chuba Hubbard. So pulling up the heat map, again, a lot of red. And obviously we don't have year four. All of these guys are going to be in the last year of their rookie contracts if they're fantasy relevant at all. The reality is most of these guys aren't fantasy football relevant for us at this point in their careers already. There is one glaring outlier and one clear winner here in this second round. If you drafted Amon Ross St. Brown, you hit. This is the only player in all of the data that we looked at today that gave you multiple firm hits, multiple top 12 seasons at the position. So one out of 12 in this class, 8%. Amon Ross St. Brown being a superstar outlier for your second rounds. But when we take it a step down and we look at how many guys produce just one for us, because that is our next benchmark, it still is only Amon Ross St. Brown. So the one player, 8%. Amon Ross St. Brown being the only guy to give you any top 12 seasons during his rookie contract. So let's go to those fair hits. How many guys gave us top 24 seasons? The answer is two. It's Amon Ross St. Brown and Pat Frymuth. And keep in mind that data for the tight ends is top 12 is a fair hit. So that was a top 12 season from Pat Frymuth. But that's just 16%. So the majority of this class produced nothing for your fantasy football rosters. 10 out of 12 players. 83.3%, the largest margin of any of the classes we looked at today, were failures. They never produced any top 24 seasons in fantasy points per game for you on their rookie contracts. All of those failed players being Trey Sermon, Rashad Bateman, Michael Carter, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, Kadarius Tony, Kenneth Gainwell, Amari Rogers, and Chuba Hubbard. If you drafted any of those players in the second round of that 2021 class, it was a waste. And I think the big takeaway here is that Amon Ross St. Brown is an outlier. That is not normal. We've seen three classes now where people are not giving you multiple top 12 seasons outside of what Amon Ross St. Brown has been able to give you. And we talked about that failure rate of those guys in the first two classes. This class was even emphasized a step further. 10 out of 12 is absolutely crazy, 83%. So we're looking at three classes here where you have 60-ish percent on the first two, 80% on the third one. I've said it multiple times on this video, but I am trying to emphasize it to you guys. Those picks are such a gamble. It is so hard to find those difference makers. So I think the most shocking, and I sent it in a group chat with Nick and Adam, and Nick even said, are you serious when I showed him this data? But let's pull up the four-year combined data here. You see what we've done is we put together all of those opportunities for a player from those classes to have given us a top 24 season at the least. The sample size as a whole is 117 opportunities. Right now, with these classes, with the second round data, five total times, five times out of 117 opportunities, just 4.3%, we were able to get a top 12 season out of a second round pick that we spent. That is insanely low. And now obviously we're only looking at the last three classes that fit this data criteria. So obviously it could change a little bit, but that puts it into perspective what you should be expecting to get out of that second round pick when you draft it. And then even when we're looking at that top 24 season, that fair hit, just somebody who is going to be a good piece for your roster, a depth piece. You're going to be able to play them as a flex. You're going to play them as a wide receiver three, maybe. Maybe a wide receiver two if you get lucky. That only happens 17 out of 117 times for a total of 14.5%. So when you merge those two together, the top 12 finishes and the top 24 finishes, we are still below 20% of the time that we are getting a top 24 asset in the second round. So let's look at the big scary number that is sitting there on the right side of the screen. Failed hits. 81.2% of the time, the player failed to produce a top 24 season 
over the course of their rookie contract. That was 95 out of 117 times they were nothing for your fantasy football rosters. And just to reference back to that first round episode, in that first round episode, we talked about the failure rate for first round picks being 46%. And we talked about how that was kind of scary, how it was a gamble at 46% of the time failing on a first round selection. If you thought that was scary, 81.2% for second rounds, it is absolutely nightmare material to think that that is the chance that you fail when making a second round selection from your Dynasty Fantasy football rosters. Now again, we are looking at it in a bubble, so take that with a grain of salt, but this was an exercise that I do hope emphasized the risk in picks. And you guys asked for the second round. We're not doing third round. If you think the second round was bad, the third round is going to be absolutely horrible. But you've now got a chance to see what those first round picks really look like and what those second round picks really look like for your Dynasty Fantasy football rosters. And if that scares you, you got nine days plus the day that you were on the clock for your Dynasty rookie drafts where you can possibly trade these second round picks. So go find those suckers in your league, trade them a second round pick on the Hopium, and also go get yourself some good players that can be top 24, top 12 assets possibly in the future. Or if you still want to have fun and take the picks, at least you know what you're getting. This is certainly a gamble for your Dynasty Fantasy football rosters. So with that being said, this is the end of this video. So if you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It is the best free way to show this channel some support. And I appreciate your guys' support on the last episode. It was a fun one to make. Hopefully the second round data was just as fun for you guys as well. And hopefully you guys found it informative. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Love interacting with you guys there. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're doing all the YouTube stuff. And also on NFL Draft Night, make sure you're tapping into the BDGE Dynasty channel because we're going to be breaking the internet with an NFL draft stream. We want you guys there hanging out with me, Nick, Adam, all the big dogs. We want to hang out with you guys. We're going to be doing some giveaways and some other stuff. But with all of that out of the way, we'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, peace out.